Yes, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as representative of the International Peatland Society, I'm happy to be here. And uh, I was just a little bit surprised two hours ago when I was told I was not going to or allowed to give the presentation that I prepared, uh, but to come up here and to speak to you. So I'll do my best. Um, and I was also told that that presentation will be online, so you can see that then later on. Uh, the International Peatland Society has three commissions. These commissions are based on economy, environment, and society the three pillars of sustainable development. Within these commissions, there are expert groups on agriculture, forestry, restoration, climate, culture, people, and a few others. So the International Peatland Society covers all aspects of peatland, peatland use, and peat. Looking at the situation in the world, it has come to a, to a stage where we're thinking differently. In the past, peat and peatlands have been used intensively. The, f the country I come from is Germany. The first written statement about the use of peatlands is about 2,000 years old, written by Plinius the Elder, a Roman who traveled throughout Europe and wrote down everything he, he saw. And he wrote that the people in northern Germany and East Frisia took the mud with their hands and formed it and dried it more by the wind than through the sun, because there was not much sun up north, and warmed their food and their guts. And since then, in Germany, peatlands have been used. In 1765, Frederick the Great proclaimed an edict saying that we want to get rid of wastelands. Peatlands, at that time, were wastelands. And during these last 250 years, it was the goal of the government in Germany until 1981, actually, to drain peatlands for agriculture and for settlements. That means for people. As a matter of fact, it was part of the Marshall Plan after the Second World War to drain peatlands for agriculture and settlements for the 1.5 million people coming from the east who were driven out of the eastern territories of, Ge of Germany. And they settled in these peatlands. So peatlands have always provided things for people. It's the case in Germany, it's the case in Canada, it's the case in Indonesia, it's worldwide. And the situation now is, you can see it in the graph that I have, it's one of the 30 slides that I have in my presentation, this is the only one we're gonna show now because of time constraints. You can see that of those three million square kilometers, According to Lapalainen, I heard by our moderator this morning that it's three to five million cubic meter, uh, uh, square kilometers. I don't know where these figures always come from. Figures are something that you can twist and turn sometimes the way you like. Um, but according to Lapalainen, in 1996, we have four million square kilometers of peatlands worldwide. And 86% of these are still undisturbed. And I assume that they will stay that way because they are in areas where people don't go to. On the other hand, we have agricultural 
peatlands, peatlands used for forestry, tropical peatlands, 3% for tropical peatlands. Peatlands are also used for energy in Finland, in Ireland, and in the Baltic states. But that is actually restricted to those, those countries. Peatlands are also used for the production of growing media. And that was actually the topic of my presentation today. Growing media are very important in Europe. Actually, the Dutch government said that that is an indispensable material for Dutch horticulture. Dutch horticulture is the second biggest industry in Holland, in the Netherlands. And it is a very important commodity, like water or like fertilizers. If you take peat away from the production of growing media, you can forget horticulture in modern times. And that is the situation in other countries as well. And that's why the Dutch government said we need a certification system to certify that the peat that we are using comes from areas that are not natural. And that is one of the systems that exist. There's one in, in England and there's one in Canada. And this commodity is most important. And I, I wish that we in Germany or the, maybe the people in Holland and Europe altogether would be in the situation that you are in, in the Congo or in Peru or in other countries where you have just discovered peatlands. Because then the stakeholders can sit together and talk about how to use or not to use peatlands. In Germany, we were not in that situation 250 years ago when Frederick the Great said, we have to get rid of these wastelands. But now, you can sit together and talk about these things, all stakeholders. And stakeholders have to be included in all discussions. And I would just like to bring forward a message, and I'm quoting something that was said in 1992 during the conference in Rio, quoting the UN. Protecting, protection of the environment is only feasible if politics consider economic and social aspects at the same time. If any pillar is weak, then the whole system of sustainable development is not sustainable. Thank you.